wild coyotes in California are on the attack. Monday, watch ABC's World News tonight. The great grocery giveaway is pulled off after all. I'm Clark Jessen with that story. We'll be on the back roads and byways tonight at about 12,000 feet. And we'll meet Jeff Cook, a special young man who turned two years old today. All tonight on Update. Sure, we're experts. Transmissions, carburetors, what have you. A lot of places claim to be transmission experts. Sure, we're experts. Well, we fixed this gentleman's transmission 18 times alone. 19. 19. Take 19. your car to the experts that what? only fix what? transmissions and fix more of them than anyone. Amco. Why go anywhere else? Amco centers are located at 43rd and Dodge, 60th and L, 72nd and Bedford in Omaha, and in Council Bluffs at 16th Street and Avenue A. Atari has captured the hearts, the imaginations, and the TV sets of America. Kmart has captured the fun, the excitement, and the true-to-life action and sounds of Atari at a Kmart price. Emotions run high as Atari puts family member against family member, friend against friend, world against world. With Atari, Kmart sale priced at just $129.94 through Saturday. Kmart is the saving place. Crime Stoppers is helping make Omaha a safer place for you to live. Since late March, when the program began, Crime Stopper tips have helped arrest 30 felons, clearing more than 40 cases from the books of the Omaha Police Department, and helping to recover over $24,000 in stolen property. Crime Stoppers works, but we need your help to put criminals where they belong. Watch Crime Stoppers Tuesdays at 5 and 10 on Newswatch 7. This is 7 TV. This is Newswatch 7 Update with Jerry Fannin, meteorologist Don Novak, and sports with Ross Jernstrom. Good evening, everyone. At a time of high unemployment and economic hardships, you don't give away free food without some concern for order. Sacks of free groceries were handed out in Omaha today. As Clark Jessen reports, there were some tense moments, although in the end, the giveaway was called a success. Hundreds lined up outside Civic Auditorium for so-called Heart Day, an effort by the Interfaith Social Action Advisory Council to provide to the unemployed and those who needed it advice on everything from jobs to housing to health. And yes, after a week of controversy and concern, organizers decided to give out groceries. Did you have uh, food stamps? No food stamps? You need food stamps? Mm -hmm. We're a month behind in food stamps in Douglas County now. We don't, we have Many of these people came here for the free food but were encouraged to first visit the 100-plus booths representing social agencies. When organizer Rabbi Barry Weinstein told the crowd where to sign up for the food giveaway, hundreds did so all at once. Weinstein was surrounded as he passed out coupons to be redeemed for the food. Weinstein had decided that to avoid riotous conditions, people would be bused 50 at a time to another place to pick up the food. But before that could happen, an altercation broke out between two women. One elderly lady was slightly injured in the scuffle. Workers in the crowd said it typified the frustration among the people here. Finally, the bus pulled up outside, and one load at a time, those who signed up for free groceries were taken to Sokol Hall in South Omaha and given two full sacks each. Weinstein says despite all the fears about handing out free food, the giveaway had done its job. I believe that unless we can feed the tummy, we can't make the heart and the soul aspire to rebuild ourselves. And this is the kind of time when we can do it. There's not one government dollar involved in this effort. There's not one government worker involved here. This is all the religious community providing just a few phone calls to the business community and private people. And look at the outpouring here. He estimates Heart Day provided a Thanksgiving-like dinner for more than 800 households. Clark Jessen, Newswatch 7 Update. A fifth victim has died from Tuesday's grain elevator explosion in Raymond, Nebraska. Elevator manager William Crone died at a Lincoln hospital today from severe burns. Two other burn victims remain in critical condition. The elevator blast killed four persons on Tuesday. 
One Omaha teenager was stabbed to death this morning. His brother was wounded. Police say 17-year-old Mark McAndrews was killed at his home on South 54th Street. 20-year-old Sean McAndrews was also stabbed and is in good condition. Police say their mother was at home at the time. Authorities are looking for a 53-year-old man, an acquaintance of the mother. The stabbings may have resulted from an argument over loud music. Lech Valenza went to church today. Normally, that would not be newsworthy, but today it was, since it was Valenza's first time to Mass since being freed from government arrest. ABC's David Ensor reports from Poland. When Lech Valenza left his house this morning, he knew thousands were waiting to see him at St. Brigida's Church near the Gdansk shipyard. But the Valenzas decided to steer clear of the crowds to walk through their housing development to a small neighborhood chapel. There, Valenza worshipped with just over a hundred others. His first public appearance since being released a week ago from 11 months incarceration in a government facility. It was a chance for Vuenza to watch his eldest son, Bogdan, read from the Bible. A chance for the devout former union leader to give thanks to God that he is free again. During today's service, he may have thought back to his meeting yesterday with the head of Poland's church. Vuenza will need Archbishop Glemp's help now if he's to have any hope at all of progress towards solidarity's goals. He has said he'll keep fighting for social justice in Poland, but first he needs time to think, to recover from his ordeal. With Wałęsa there, the congregation at the little chapel grew too large for the building. People seemed to want to get a look at Poland's most famous private citizen. And when the service was over, most of them walked behind him as he went home. Wałęsa isn't ready yet to take any new stands, but many Poles appear ready to follow him when he does. David Ensor, ABC News, Warsaw. President Reagan will tell us what his decision for the MX missile is tomorrow night. He's expected to endorse the so-called Dense Pack plan, putting all the new missiles in one 14-square-mile area. Dense Pack faces stiff opposition in Congress. Mr. Reagan's announcement will be made during an address to the nation Monday night. Coming up next on the back roads and byways, we'll find out what this man is doing, what he's looking at. Ice Capades presents Dorothy Hamill. She's lovely, she's lively, you have to agree. Who, me? Yes, Dorothy Hamill. She's something to see. Dorothy Hamill, the star of Ice Capades. A shimmering holiday spectacular for the whole family. Ice Capades, Attic Sarban, November 30th through December 5th. Tickets, Attic Sarban and Brandeis. Yonkers is having a 20 to 50% off host and hostess sale. Save on hundreds of table accessories, perfect for holiday entertaining and year-round. Lancer, beverage or on-the-rocks glasses, one dozen, $9.99. Handcrafted Love Lights candles from Colony, $9.99 each. Glass and silver plate melon salad bowl sets from William Adam, $9.99 each. Yonkers, 20 to 50% off host and hostess sale. Now, the cost of entertaining won't eat you out of house and home. and Money Map puts your money at your fingertips. Bank where you want, when you want, with Omaha National's bank in a billfold at a Money Mat near you. Cause you can't take it with you. Thirteen convenient Money Mat locations all around town. Now open at Sears Crossroads and Baker's at 50th and Ames. Yes, you can. Surgery could cost you your financial health, but not if you had the family health care policy from American Family Insurance. It's a major medical plan with co-insurance features and a selection of benefit limits and deductibles. With our smallest deductible and high enough limits, the most you'd pay of covered expenses is $125. American Family Insurance. Call an American Family agent today. See the white or yellow pages. A picture may be worth a thousand words, but it can also be worth thousands of feet. This week, the road takes us high above the road with two men whose only job is to get exposure. We are airborne for Northeast Nebraska. Our plane is a twin-engine Piper. At the controls is pilot Chuck Way. His passenger on this trip, as always, is Terry Sharton. Chuck and Terry's task is simple, 
or at least it might look that way. Determine exactly where we need to be, and uh, once we get there, it's up to me to make sure that he stays there. Terry is an aerial photographer for a Lincoln engineering firm. Using a 280-pound camera mounted to the airplane fuselage, he can snap off 280 exposures of the ground below in a 9-inch by 9-inch format. Uh, we photograph everything from uh, coal mines, railroads, highways, uh, sewage disposal plants, uh, cities for uh, their planning, basically anything that any engineer or any private person or consulting firm would want a picture of. On this day, Terry will be photographing the airport at Bloomfield, Nebraska, first from 12,000 feet high and then from 3,000 feet above the snow-covered ground. Here's the view he has through the camera lens. And here's the view through our camera lens, looking through a small hole in the fuselage. Scale is all important in aerial photography. Thus, the altitude has to be exact, as does the line of flight, which means some deft maneuvering for the pilot. Basically, the difference is you're shooting straight down on the, on the surface of the Earth, which uh, most photographers will know is uh, the light coming from the Earth at that particular angle is a lot different than shooting uh, something at an angle. So basically, there is not a whole lot of difference. You're still dealing with shutter speeds and f-stops and uh, light exposure values. Working as a team, Terry and Chuck have been flying together now about four years. Their photographs may not be hanging in any museums, but in the hands of the right people, the people who pay for their service, those photographs are invaluable. Coming up, where to go to get away from the Midwest winter. But first, we'll try to get Don Novak to tell us when the cold weather is going to begin. A very, very big message for grown-ups. Do I look 20% smaller to you? I must to McDonald's. When I order a regular burger at McDonald's, they make it with 20% less meat than Burger King. Unbelievable. Luckily, I know a perfect way to show McDonald's how I feel. I go to Burger King. Aren't you hungry for Burger King now? To protect your new or used car against rust and corrosion, come to your Z-Bart dealer. Only Zbart has these microfilm diagrams to ensure coverage of internal rust-prone areas. Patented Zbart tools, Zbart factory trained technicians, specially formulated sealants, this Zbart lifetime warranty. Only Zbart has all this. Add life, looks, and value to your newer used car. Come to your Zbart dealer. Paul Zbart in Omaha, Council Bluffs, and Lincoln. Pope John Paul is back in Rome tonight after a two-day trip to the island of Sicily, an island he wants to rid of organized crime. In an outdoor mass today, the pontiff urged citizens to re resist doing nothing while hundreds of mafia killings take place within their midst. Sicily is thought to be one of the world's biggest centers of drug trafficking and organized crime. John Paul told Sicilian young people that drugs strike a hatchet blow to the roots of life. For the first time, a White House economist admits that the federal deficit could reach $200 billion in 1984. Martin Felstein says unless the president and Congress curb spending, it could happen. Ninety persons were killed in the collapse of an Israeli army building in southern Lebanon last week, but the tragedy was not the result of sabotage. That's a finding of an Israeli government commission, which reported today that a natural gas leak led to the explosion and collapse of the army headquarters in Tyre. Ninety persons died, including 75 Israelis, among them two dozen soldiers. At first, the explosion was attributed to the terrorist action, but that's now been ruled out. The disaster was the worst ever suffered by the Israeli army in its 43 years. Well, we were talking a minute ago about 
when the cold weather is going to start, and you're saying it's soon. It's coming very quickly, and before we get to that, though, I'd like to try and make everybody feel a little bit better. Let's take a look at uh, all-time record uh, low temperatures by state for the uh, 48 states and see how we stand up here. Nebraska and Iowa both come in with uh, 47 below as the all-time record low temperature. They share that with uh, New Hampshire itself, which also has a 47. But there are that's only the uh, 17th or 18th rather out of the 48 states as far as cold temperatures. All these other states had colder temperatures. Montana has the record for the uh, 48 states with 70 below zero. Of course, Alaska, when you consider all 50 states, has the all-time record with about 80 below, and that was set in 1971. So we're not in too bad a shape. There could be uh, colder places to be around the area. As we look at our almanac, we see that it wasn't nearly that cold today. The low temperature this morning was 36 degrees uh, above normal. High temperature, 54 degrees, also about 10 degrees above normal. No precipitation. We had a sunrise, or rather sunrise tomorrow morning. It'll be 20 minutes after 7, and sun will set at 4.59 tomorrow evening. Back on the computer then, this is how the uh, high temperatures today shaped up. Generally fairly mild down to the south of us, 60s, even in our viewing area, not too bad with 50s and 40s. But then that cooler air that we were talking about already starting to move in, teens for high temperatures up in the northern portions of South Dakota. They had single digit readings up in North Dakota and just the north of the U.S. border, sub-zero readings for highs today. That cool air is coming our way. But let's look at the national map right now and see how that's shaping up. This frontal system continues to push off with some fairly mild but wet weather off towards the east of it. And then out in our area, the polar, or rather the Arctic front starting to slip on down. A couple minor low pressures triggering some light snow across this region. We may see some of that this evening, but overall that won't be too significant. I am watching this evening a low pressure area that appears to be developing off the west coast and that I think is going to trigger a major uh, snowstorm for the southern or central rock and maybe giving us some problems possibly towards midweek. We'll have to keep an eye on that one. The big problem, though, is going to be this high pressure pouring cold air into our area over the next couple of days, and that's how it's going to be shaping up. We look at the current conditions, though, right now, not too awfully bad. Cloudy skies and 40 here in Omaha, mostly cloudy and 42 down at Lincoln. We have a dew point of 36. Winds are out of the southeast at 6 and the rising barometer. Looking at the radar right now at 125 nautical miles, not showing any activity at this time. Probably won't be showing too much because anything we do get will be very, very light this evening. On the computer then for tomorrow, here's what we expect. The frontal system be about this position by midday with mostly cloudy to cloudy skies off to the west. Some light snow temperatures in the 20s and 30s for the most part. Up to the north of us, mostly cloudy. A few flurries uh, to light snow over in eastern portions of Minnesota. And temperatures generally in the 20s and 30s there. For our viewing area, look for partly to mostly sunny skies and to the south of us as well, with temperatures in the 40s, a few 50s and 60s off to the south of the region. Details of my latest forecast then call for mostly cloudy skies tonight with a 20% chance of some sprinkles or snow flurries. A low temperature, I think, is going to stay above freezing for, and officially here with 34, but watch out tomorrow morning. There may be a few slick spots around the region. Tomorrow, look for partly to mostly sunny conditions with a high of 40, winds out of the northeast at 10 to 15, then tomorrow night becoming mostly cloudy and colder with a low dropping down to about 18. And on Tuesday, mostly cloudy, a few flurries, a high of 27 degrees. The wizard, Clyde, is saying that, uh, well, as far as the snow, should watch Rob Dixon and Jim Flowers uh, looking for the possibility of snow on Wednesday. But generally, very, very cold weather will be ours throughout the week, and that will continue all the way into Friday. Doesn't look too good for the home team. What about Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is going to be cold. But no snow. Well, I wouldn't rule the snow out. Right now, it doesn't look like a good possibility, though. Okay. Thanks, Don. Okay. Well, it was nice outdoors today, but we all know it can't last much longer. Soon, we'll be dreaming of faraway places, warm places, and wishing we were there. Jackie Steele tells us where some of those getaway spots are located. Some long-range forecasters say this is going to be the coldest winter of the century. Want to get away from it all? Shake the winter blahs? Then why not escape? Nebraskans that escape in the winter tend to enjoy sunspots such as Hawaii, Mexico, Florida, Southern California, and Caribbean cruises. Hawaii is the most popular of all, but they all seem to have similarities, such as long stretches of white beaches dotted with palm trees and temperate climates, which for some of us means getting a tan. To have a tan in the winter. But to get that tan, you should try to book your reservations at least three months in advance to get exactly what you want. Trips to Mexico and Caribbean cruises are also very big this winter. I think without a doubt, a cruise is one of the best buys in the travel market today. And an important factor is the fact you know what the, what the total cost of the vacation is going to be before you depart. Because it includes your air, your meals, your hotel, your sightseeing. So it's a total package and you have 95% of your cost 
before you depart. There's been a lot of Mexico interest, which I think has to do with the devaluation of the peso. Um, a lot of cruises. Cruises are a real bargain now because all the air is included. All the cruise lines are paying for your airfare practically, to especially the Caribbean cruises. And so everyone's taking advantage of that. Travel agencies are a quick and easy way to set up your vacations with no added expense for their services. There's usually some room for those choosing to go at the last minute. Here are prices you can expect to pay for one week per person quoted by two local agents, including airfare and living accommodations. Hawaii, approximately $660 to $1,000. Mexico, about $1,000. Cruises, $800 to $1,000. And Florida, $400 to $600. January through March are the most popular months to take vacations, so make your reservations now. Jackie Steele, Newswatch 7 Update. Well, coming up, another look at that I Got It, You Take It and Run Through the Band touchdown play. And remember this, it's called Pro Football. It was actually played today, and we'll have highlights next. Now, by order of the Board of Directors, Wilco, after 20 years in the U.S., is going out of business. It's a billion-dollar sale nationwide. Everything goes. Everything just in time for the holidays. Now you can get an extra 20% off Wilco's already low discount prices. Thousands of famous brands. Thousands of holiday gift ideas for home and family. All sales final. Cash MasterCard and Visa accepted. But hurry. Inventory is limited to store stock. Wilco's going out of business sale. Don't miss it. Santa's Helper has a great gift idea for you. Nebraska Baldwin has been selected to test market Baldwin's new computerized fun machine. Just one finger lets you sound like a whole orchestra. Nebraska Baldwin just received a semi-load and the warehouse is jammed. Now during this factory authorized test market sale only at Nebraska Baldwin, Santa's Helper is introducing the new fun machine for only $995. Many other pianos and organs at savings up to 40%. Act today, follow Santa's Helper to Nebraska Baldwin Piano and Organ in Omaha and Lincoln. Now you can win $10,000 in Omaha's $10,000 plus giveaway or win a $500 weekly prize. Just use your Visa banking card at any Visa merchant or use your Visa banking card or plus card at any 24-hour plus banking center. Each card use is one entry, so use your card often and increase your odds. If you don't have a Visa banking card, get yours now at First West Side Bank, Bank of Papillion, or First National Bank of Omaha and maybe win $10,000. Well, I'll be rich! Curtis Mathis National Trade-In Days are on. Oh, George, I can't wait to trade this old TV for $100 to $300 off on a Curtis Mathis video recorder or camera. Ah, with a four-year warranty. Oh, audio equipment or a color TV. What a four-year warranty. Oh, a big screen TV or gorgeous cabinet. With a four-year warranty. Oh, with their exclusive four-year warranty. That means quality. National Trade-In Days now at your Curtis Mathis Home Entertainment Center. Pro football is back, but there were a lot of empty seats around the stadiums today. That's right. The verdict is still out with the yes. fans. Thousands of football fans found a way to get even with the players and owners today. They just didn't show up. Several stadiums across the country were filled to less than capacity on the first day of the professional football in nearly nine weeks. It was the start of a new season. The Green Bay Packers are now 3-0 after their 26-7 victory over Minnesota today. Watch what happens on the second half kickoff. The Vikings are all set to return the ball but it is stripped loose. Green Bay's Maurice Harvey takes it 25 yards into the end zone for a touchdown. That made it 19 to 7 Green Bay. Green Bay's offense was superb today. Here Lynn Dickey passes over the middle to one of his favorite receivers John Jefferson for 18 yards. That set up a touchdown a few plays later by Eddie Lee Ivory over the right side his second touchdown of the day. Lynn Dickey was injured in the game when he bruised his hip but it is not expected to be serious. Green Bay wins it 26 to 7. Meanwhile, in Shea Stadium, the Jets shut out Baltimore 37 to nothing. The Jets scored on their first five possessions. New York showed no signs of the eight-week layoff when Freeman McNeil robbed 34 yards to give the Jets a 7 to nothing lead. New York also had success with the passing game. Richard Todd hits Johnny Lamb Jones over the middle for a 23-yard touchdown play. The Jets win the game 37 to nothing. 
In Buffalo, the Bills trailed the Miami Dolphins 3 to nothing when Joe Cribbs fumbled and quarterback Joe Ferguson scooped it up and ran it in for a touchdown. Buffalo led 7 to 6 late in the fourth quarter, then came a costly turnover. Robert Holt takes the ball on a double reverse and loses it at the 44-yard line. Miami's Mike Kozlowski recovered the fumble and returned it 30 yards. That set up the winning field goal from 21 yards by Uwe von Schaman. The Dolphins win the game 9-7 over the Bills. Meanwhile, in Chicago, the Bears fell behind 14-3 to Detroit when Ray Oldham picked off this pass and raced 35 yards for the touchdown. But Chicago tied the game up, and with five seconds left, John Revito booted an 18-yarder to give Chicago a 20-17 win over Detroit. Here are all the finals from the NFL today. The Jets shut out Baltimore. It was Cincinnati over Philadelphia, 18 to 14. In other games, Chicago edged Detroit. New Orleans beat Kansas City, 27-17. Elsewhere, Atlanta defeated the Los Angeles Rams, 34 to 17. Miami edged Buffalo, 9 to 7. In other games, it was Green Bay over Minnesota. Cleveland beat New England, 10 to 7. In other games, Pittsburgh beat Houston. It was Dallas over Tampa Bay. Elsewhere, San Francisco beat St. Louis 31 to 20. Seattle beat Denver 17 to 10. In other games, Washington took the New York Giants 27 to 17, and San Diego will meet the Los Angeles Raiders on Monday night football tomorrow night on 7 TV, beginning at 8 o'clock. Nebraska's leading rusher will play against Oklahoma. Mike Rozier said even though he may not be completely recovered, he will play against the Sooners no matter what. Yesterday, Nebraska center Dave Remington received his second outlet award for being the nation's outstanding interior lineman. Even though he has won the award twice, he doesn't think he'll be drafted first by the pros. Well, you know, you think about it, but there's so many things ahead of me, and, uh, you know, so many things could happen. You just try to forget about it. I have, you know, at least three, three college games left, and, uh, you know, with the bowl game and things, so there's a lot of time. I'm not even going to worry about it until the time comes. In one week, the Heisman ballots uh, go in. Do you think this... Winning the Allen Trophy will help you get a few more votes in the balloting? Well, like I said before, it can't hurt. And, uh, you know, I, I really have no, I, I don't think I have a chance to win the, the Heisman. I don't think. And, but I was surprised last year with the Allen, so I, you never can tell. <laughs> you at home can have a vote in this year's balloting for the Heisman Trophy. Send your top three choices to Heisman 7 TV, Box 777, Omaha, Nebraska 68101. When all the ballots are tabulated, we will send your top three choices in on our official Heisman Trophy ballot. Well, after upsetting Notre Dame yesterday, Air Force has been selected to play Vanderbilt in the Hall of Fame Bowl on New Year's Eve. Bowl officials were ready to invite Stanford, but they were upset by California yesterday in one of the most bizarre plays ever in college football. There are only four seconds left on the clock. Stanford has just taken the lead by one point. All they have to do is tackle the ball carrier. But California eludes all the defenders by lateraling the ball five times downfield. The final lateral was to Kevin Moen. He weaves his way through the Stanford band, cheerleaders, and some fans into the end zone. The officials are not sure what happened. They decide to huddle at midfield. There is no time left on the clock. Is it a legal touchdown? Well, the refs say yes. Can you believe it? California wins the game 25 to 20 over Stanford. Isn't and we'll, that wild? I will never forget that play, ever. Maverick football coming up right after the news. We're going to take a look at the whole season and how the Mavs did. Okay, thanks, Ross. You bet. A special birthday party when we come back. Of all the economy cars in America, many have front-wheel drive traction. But of all those front-wheel drive cars, only these four have a flat engine profile with an extremely low center of gravity for outstanding handling and traction. And every single one of them is a Subaru. See National Auto Sales, 801 Fort Crook Road North in Bellevue. For complete reconditioning, it's Ming. Ming will clean your engine, trunk, interior, and put a brilliant shine on your car. Ming, it never needs waxing. Someone else is spending this evening alone. New Beginnings Video's introductory service will bring you together. For single adults, any age, it is worth a phone call. Anyone who doesn't listen to Z92 has a hearing problem. Did you hear what I said? Am I getting through to you? Z92. It's hot. It's hot. <laughs> it's hot. 
You know why? Because Z92 has some variety. Great classic rock. Great new rock. And lots of it. Z92. It's hot. So, I say, whenever you need to rock, turn to Z92. That's a good turn. Z92. The rock. Check the temperature on your water heater. Most are set for 140 degrees. But unless you have a dishwasher, a setting of 120 or less could be adequate for your family. This was a special day in the life of little Jeff Cook of Council Bluffs, but then Jeff's entire life thus far has been special. The child has never left the hospital in which he was born, not once. So today, on his second birthday, Jeff's parents and friends gathered to share in the occasion, as John Apker reports. Birthdays are special times for us all, but sometimes we take them for granted. That wasn't the case today, however, at Mercy Hospital in Council Bluffs. The pediatrics ward was transformed into a birthday gala to honor Jeff Cook. Jeff was born two years ago to Dean and Gloria Cook. But as Dean describes, there were problems associated with Jeff's birth. Well, he's, uh, they were too much premature, and his lungs were not fully developed. So he's had problems breathing on his own. <laughs> Jeff has undergone operations since his birth to correct his problem, but he is still connected to a respirator to aid in his breathing. The Cooks are not sure when they will be able to take Jeff home, but they are anxious to have him become a full-time member of their family, like his twin brother, Jason. It'd be nice, then we wouldn't have to come up to hospital all the time, and Jason would have me to play with, and things like that. It's more like a family, then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. John Apker, Newswatch 7 Update. Happy birthday, Jeff. That is all of our time tonight from all of us here. Have a good week and a nice Thanksgiving, everyone. Good night. Fast, accurate, and complete, meteorologists make the difference.